The strings already pressed down with my first finger, but as soon as I press the string down with my third finger, my first finger does relax. So you don't want the first and third fingers to both be doing an equal amount of hard work. It's mostly the third finger that's doing the work. So you can see my first and second fingers are touching the string, but they're not really pressing it down. So I suppose it's a bit like walking. What do we transfer when we walk? If you were to step forwards now, left foot first, your body weight is on your left foot. And then as soon as you put your right foot forwards, your body weight is on your right foot. So my arm weight is helping my third finger to press the string down. Okay, and I will show you some marks I have. There's my third finger. You can see the mark on it. Again, I'm not on the fingertip. Make sure you're not on the fingertip. I think you'll get more tenderness that way and that's not good. So you need to be between the pad of the finger, this area here, and the fingertip, but not actually on the fingertip. So I'll demonstrate that again. Harmonic. Stopping the string with my first finger. Third finger down. So just to let you know the sulphur names, because it will really help you to sing these sulphur names. If we use C as Do, because you're simply just getting used to playing these notes and how they feel for your left hand. D strings Re. First finger note in the fourth position is an A. So that is going to be a La. Third finger note is a B. So if A is La, B is a T. So I'll sing these for you. La, 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 T, T. So if you sing four Lars followed by four T's, you can sing along with me if you like. That will really help you stopping the string with your first and third fingers. So I'll now move on to the G string. So I'm now going to move on to task number two. So again, I've created a piece for you. And I want you to play this on each string. So it's four bars long. Again, mostly crotchets. We've got two minims at the end. A ta followed by another ta. And again, we're playing open string. We're doing a harmonic. And then we're stopping the string with first and third fingers. So I'll just demonstrate this on the D string. Fourth position harmonic always helps. So here's the piece after four, three, four. Okay, 
so again the sulfur moves so because I'm demonstrating on the D string D is Do so the sulfurs for this are Do Do So 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 La 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 If those are too high, you can sing the lower so and la. Do, do, so, 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 so. So make sure you've sung this, because if you sing this, it's going to be much more clear in your mind. And again, if you happen to be a little bit out of tune with first or third fingers, you'll know and you'll simply self-correct. So this is where the sulphur is making your cello playing much easier and giving you more confidence sooner. So the solfa is pretty amazing. If you've sung a little piece in tune, then you'll play it in tune. You may not play it in tune at first, but if you've made a mistake and you're playing a note a bit sharp or a bit flat, so sharp is too high, flat is too low, you will know you don't need someone to tell you that note is too flat or that note is too sharp. Correct it because you'll correct yourself. So that's the beauty of the solfa singing. You will be playing in tune much sooner on your instrument through solfa singing. So that's the piece on the D string. And again, you can play with gaps. You don't have to play it the way I just did. You can really spread it out. So I'll demonstrate this on the G string and I'll play it with gaps. So now G becomes Do. So we have Do, Do, So, 